Disney is so much fun and what a great way to extend the fun at home. This class is very simple, very straightforward. It would be easier if you use a stencil, which you'll find on my website to make it way simpler. But if you don't want to, don't worry. I'm going to go step by step and show you how to do the outline. It's going to be super simple. It does take time and we're going to go back and forth and work on it. So be prepared to hang out for two hours and we're going to have so much fun. Make sure that you have all your art supplies set up and ready to go. You have clothes you don't mind getting paint on. You've taken off all of your jewelry to make sure that you don't get paint on it so you don't have to scrape it off later. Have your hair tied back in a nice pretty ponytail so it's out of your face and have all your art supplies ready to go. I will be painting on a stretched canvas over a wood frame. I always like to sign my name at the back this is my pen name, Motley Muse. So I always like to sign the back because I feel that it doesn't distract from the design of the painting. But go ahead and sign wherever you're most comfortable with. This painting can be cool on paper, on maybe an awesome rock or a wood panel. But I am using a stretch canvas over a wood frame. Notice how it's been stapled down and it is already pre-gessoed so I don't have to do any prep work. I always prefer buying these ones from the art store, especially in bulk. They're way cheaper. I will be using paper towels to clean my brushes and spills, a paper plate so I can set my paint on and I won't have to worry about cleaning up a big mess later by using a porcelain or a plastic plate. I like to have a pitcher of clean water to, brush, uh, to uh, be able to clean my brushes. Now the brushes I'll be using today are a large square, a small square, a liner brush, and that's about it really. Use whatever brushes you got, but these are the brushes I'm going to use and really there is no right or wrong way or right and wrong brush to work. Just use whatever brush makes you feel more comfortable. Now I notice when I use the small tiny brushes, I get better details and better line work and I'm just pretty much happier with the details. And if I use a big brush, the big brush is mostly just for big areas and surfaces to cover them quickly. Now I'm going to be painting my painting blue and black and white. If you want to change the color and maybe make a rainbowy sky or a rainbowy type castle or maybe make your castle pink or purple or anything that would be super cool, go ahead and do that. I want you to use the colors that are going to make you happy. Now I'm choosing to do mine in black because it's going to be like in the movies or the Disney movies at the beginning with the star. So I'm going to be all traditional with mine. So. Now, notice how in my painting, I already have it pre-sketched out. Now, you can do this, or if you want, I will show you step-by-step step how to draw this out onto your canvas. But it might be easier for you if you use the stencil. Now, you can find it on my website. I have it right there, the picture. I, I sketched this out, and then I took a picture of this, so that way you can print it out. And you can either, depending on the size of your surface, you can print it and cut it out, or you could draw a grid on it and then make a grid on your canvas and draw it out like that. You could also use a projector and take that image with the projector and then put your canvas and draw it out that way. You could use transfer paper and draw the lines out or maybe a line box, a, a light box if you are using paper. So there's so many different ways in which we can transfer the image. I don't want you to get stressed out or anything because no matter what you do, it's going to be awesome because you're doing it. And if you don't like your painting the first time, don't worry. You can always go back and redo this class as many times as you want until you're happy and happy, happy, happy with your painting. But hopefully one time will be a charm and we'll get it in a all be super super cool so don't stress out at any time the only way you're going to get a bad grade in my class is if you stress out and you have a hard time with the painting so relax 
and just let it happen and let it be what it is. And the more you relax and you just go with it, and if you have a happy accident and you just go with it and you let it be, then your painting's gonna turn out super, super awesome. So no stressing. Okay, so, oh, also one more thing. If you need help with like how to use the projector, how to use the grid method, how to use the transfer paper, I wrote a book that is on my website. It's $5 and it's about 50 pages and it's written to be read like a children's book. So it's very easy to read, um, but it's really to the point with pictures, with a lot of descriptions on why and what and how come. So you're definitely going to learn a lot with it. Um, so it, it's a it's a really good read. If you got an hour, it's definitely worth the read because you're going to learn a bunch out of it. So go check it out. It's uh, called the book's name is transferring a photo onto a uh, transferring a reference photo onto a canvas. Very straightforward to the point. Okay, so I have pre sketched this out with a pencil. Uh, if you wanted to use a watercolor pencil, that might work a little bit better. I tried to make mine a little dark so you can see it. That's why I chose lead. Um, you can use a pen if you're brave. Uh, but be careful that if you're using the same type of canvas that I'm using, that you do not poke a hole. We don't want to ruin our canvases. Okay, so I have added some black onto my palette. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how to draw uh, well how to sketch not really draw we're sketching here so i got my pretty liner brush i'm going to dip it into my paint make sure it's a nice pretty point and now what i'm going to do is instead of going left to right i'm going to show you points and areas to make and then we are going to connect those points and areas and it's going to make it way simpler all right so here we go I want you to imagine where is the door going to be? Where is the top of the of the building and where are the sides? Now, we have windows and everything, but we're not going to do that till the end. It'll be so much easier to be able to balance it out if we do it at the end. So, for the line, I am going to start and I've noticed that in the castle there are a lot of areas that are triangles. So I'm going to keep that idea in mind and I'm just going to make some triangles. I want you to make on your canvas in the area of where I make these triangles and then we're going to connect them together. So I have a triangle here on the right and one on the left. The one on the left is ever so slightly above the one on the right. So I'm going to make the triangle right here. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to make another triangle. And this one's going to be slightly smaller, just a little smaller. And it's going to be a little bit shorter than the other one. And that's it. Fill in the triangle. Just because we're practicing with the paint. If you're not painting right now and you're just drawing, don't worry. This is just to get everybody to catch up with us. Okay, so we got two triangles going on. So now, where are other triangles? Now, I'm going to do some more triangles, but before I do that, I do want to make a circle. I'm going to make my circle right here at the very top. And this is going to be a room up in the castle. So we have a circle. All right. So notice how my circle isn't all the way centered. It's off to the side, to the right, just ever so slightly. Now, halfway between the circle and the triangle on this side, I am going to add another triangle. However, this triangle is going to be flat on the very top. It, at the top of the triangle does not come to a pretty point. These are the tops of the buildings. All right, so now we're gonna start adding a little bit more and a little bit more. All right, so now 
Let's do another triangle about right here. This triangle wants to be really tall and really pointy. Really tall and really pointy triangle. You're doing good. Okay. So if I'm going too fast, don't worry. Just pause the video and slow it down. Uh, I don't want you to get stressed out or anything. You don't have to do this at my pace. Okay, so I'm going to move on from here. Now I'm going to have another triangle, and this triangle is going to be so tall and skinny that it's basically just a line because it's so tall and skinny. Now I'm going to do it between this circle and between this triangle, and I'm going to make a line. First, just a line. And then after I make the line and I like the line, I'm going to make the bottom part of the line a little bit thicker. And it's going to come up to a nice pretty point. And it's going to be a triangle, but it's going to be a really skinny, skinny triangle that's very tall. You're doing good. Okay, so let's make some more triangles. Now, between this one and this one, we have another one, but this guy's going to be kind of little. And notice how he's not all the way in the middle between the triangles. He's kind of, if we were to draw a straight line between those two triangles, he's off to the side ever so slightly. Almost if we drew a line from the middle of these three, it almost is like a curve if we did draw that line. Okay, so we're doing good. There are a couple more triangles left to go. Now we have a little tiny a triangle over here that's about the same size as this triangle that we made here. Make sure you keep those, those points very pointy. Okay, so now next to it, we're going to have one more triangle and it's going to be a smaller triangle and it's going to be the two top points of this triangle and the one next to it on the left side are going to roughly be about the same height. All right, okay. Let's see, there are still a couple more triangles left to go. Oh, you know what? I see where we can put in a square. More of a rectangle, actually. I'm gonna put a rectangle right here. Make it square. And that's gonna be like a chimney. Okay, so we do have a couple more little ones. Let's put a little tiny triangle right here. It's going to be a small one. It's probably going to be our smallest triangle is right here. <gasps> ooh, ooh, look what happened to my hand. I accidentally set it down. Ooh. Make sure that doesn't happen to you. Be very careful that you don't set your hand down. So that way you don't smudge the painting. All right, you're doing really good. Keep up the good work. Okay, so now I'm going to do another circle. It's going to be right here to the left of that big one we made. And 
And at the top of that circle that we just made, I'm going to do three points, almost like a crown. On the top of this circle that we made here, we're going to do a square. All right, we're getting really close to where we're going to start connecting all of these. Okay, so I'm going to make a line from this circle. We're going to go straight down, and this line is going to go as far as the bottom of this triangle. Now, once I have that line, I'm going to make it a little bit fatter on the bottom and it's gonna come up to a point underneath of the circle. So it's kind of like a triangle. This is gonna be the big tower. Now this line is gonna go down further, but for right now, I'm really mostly just interested that it goes down far enough to be at the bottom of the triangle that is to the right of it. All right, so now underneath of this triangle here, we're going to make a space that is where the people can stand. So I'm making, I'm gonna be making a square box right under here. Now it's gonna be dented a little bit on the right. So watch what I'm doing over here. I'm denting it, so I'm making a square but then I'm kind of giving it a little bit of a dent on the left side of the square. See that? I made a square, but it's a little dented. Now I want to do the same thing with this one. I want to make a square under here that's slightly longer, wider than the triangle that's above it but it's also going to be dented over here. So it's going to come down a little and then it's going to swoosh on over to the right and it'll be a dented square. And it's going to kind of come over a little bit here. See how it comes over slightly on the right at the bottom and slightly on the left it also comes over. So now I'm going to fill in the square. There's going to be a square here that I'm going to fill it in, but then there is a little dents here that kind of come in just ever so slightly at the bottom. So see how I'm filling it in? I'm going to fill in this square, but then look at what happens at the bottom here. It kind of dents in again. These little details right here, I know they're annoying. But trust me, in the end, with these little details, it'll your painting will be so sharp and it'll have lots of details in it, and it'll really, it'll really come together very nicely and be very beautiful. So it's worth all these little details, okay? Stay, stick with it. Notice how I dented on both sides right here. So now I'm going to draw a straight line down, and this is going to be the edge of my castle. And it's going to kind of come out just a little bit over here on the right. It's still going to go straight down, but notice how it kind of veers off to the right and makes that bump. There. So now let's go from this way going left. We're going to continue adding more shapes together. Now, I want you 
to make a straight line that comes down from here. Be careful you don't put your hand up on your painting, okay? Be very careful about that. Make a straight line right here. And then I want you to dent it in just a little bit. So it's going to swoosh to the right. Then I got a little line coming out here on this side. And now what we're going to do is we're going to have, um, this is what they, on the castle, this is what they call ramparts. So they're little areas where the people can like look through, like it's little gaps in the wall. Little tiny gaps that the people can look through. I'm going to come down and I'm going to give this roof a little bit of a roof right there. Do you see how I've added? It kind of comes out pointy ever so slightly. Just a little bit of a point. And then it comes straight down. And then I have those little areas that are called ramparts. And they're where the people can like, it's a hole in the wall. All this is going to be black, but we'll work, work on that later. Let's work on the outline of the castle first. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a straight line here and another straight vertical line. We're kind of creating a window. I'm going to let that be for right now. I'll come, well, you know what? We're here, why not? I'm going to make the tops of this window area kind of rounded a little, just a little, little bit of a roundedness at the top. Make sure that roof is nice and pointy. I'm going to bring a little line down just a little bit here. I want that straight line right there. Okay, so now we're going to connect over here to, remember how we made a chimney? Now we want to put a slanty roof right here. It's going to slant over to the right. And then it's going to come down to the bottom part of the triangle to the right. So it's only going to go down that far. And then it's going to go in just a little bit. It's going to come back the way it came. And then it's going to go straight down again. See how it kind of just comes out a little bit. And then that's going to slide back down to this area. I mean, it's not really, but it's kind of like I made the shape of a backwards S. I'm going to fill that in just a little bit. It's happening slowly, but surely we're getting there. You're doing a good job. Okay. So we're going to let this roof come in just a little bit, a little bit of a slant there, and we're going to go straight up a little bit, not far. And then I'm going to come out, and you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do an oval right here. An oval is a circle that got squished. I'm going to kind of make it a thick circle, but I still want there to be a window right there. So now I'm going to make sure that this bottom line that we made to come up, it's going to touch the bottom of the oval. And I'm going to do this horizontal line to the side. So it's almost like it's a little building sitting all by itself right there on the corner. 
Now I'm going to go straight up here, straight up. I'm going to bring this, this triangle down just ever so slightly and fill it in. But you know what I want to do here? I have a nice pretty line up here for this corn, this triangle, right? But I want this to come out just a little bit and to have like a square that comes out and it doesn't go all the way down. It's almost just like a line on the side, just a line that's right there. And that's part of the building just sticking out. All right, so I'm gonna give that a break for a minute and we'll, let's start over here on the left side and we're gonna work our way up. Now we have this big triangle over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a square that's kind of angled. Remember how we angled it over here on the bottom? We wanna do the same here. We wanna angle the bottom of the square. And fill in that square. And then underneath that square, I'm going to put another square, a really skinny square. I'm going to make that line go straight down all the way, all the way straight down. Okay, so we still have more to go. Now, remember how we have this area that bumps out a light lot over here on the right? I'm going to do the same thing on the left. I'm going to have a little space that comes down and it bumps out. And for here, I have another ramparts, just like what we did over here. I'm going to do a little tiny skinny line and then I'm going to do another skinny line. And then what I'm going to do is fill it in right here. So it touches the first line. And then, see this, it angles down and goes to the right. And then I'm gonna fill that in, but I'm gonna give a gap. So that way there's a gap for the people that they can look out and see. Okay, so now I'm gonna do another second line right next to this line, and it's gonna go straight down. There we go, straight down but I still want those areas to stick out. You're doing really good. Okay. So now I want a big square window here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a rectangle right here underneath this triangle. And there's gonna be a window that's gonna be right here. Now, from this bottom square, I'm going to draw a line straight across. And we want a rampart, just like what we did over here. We want people to be able to look out. So I'm going to do a skinny little rectangle right here. Make sure it's flat. All right. So I'm going to fill it in with another line going horizontal so I can make it a little shorter. Okay, so now we have this area here. I'm going to fill it in. It's going to be a square. I'm going to fill in this square. Ooh, you're doing really good. It's coming along. Okay, so now we have this triangle. And so with this triangle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a window right here, so it's going to be flat on the bottom, and first make a square. Make a square, and then at the top, we want our angle, our window to have like a roof. We want it to have a pointy top, so I went and made it pointy. I'm going to do a straight line over here sideways, just ever so slightly. Now, there's going to be another window that's going to be about here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a rectangle first, make my rectangle. And then after I have my rectangle, I want that window to have a pointy top. So I'm going to put some paint angled right here so that the top of my window is pointy. 
Now from this line here, I want to go straight back down. And there we go. We're getting there. It's coming slowly but surely. Slowly but surely it's happening. Now I want to make a line here that's an angled line. There. And I connected those black areas. All right. So I'm going to bring this out just a little bit to help for later. There we go. So now we have a little bit more. You're doing a good job. Keep up the good work. You know what? We forgot one rampart. Or you know what? I'm going to let it be. Never mind. Okay, so I have two windows that are going to be right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a really large rectangle. Once I got the rectangle and it's nice and pretty and I'm happy with it and it looks good, then I'm gonna cut the rectangle in half with a really skinny, skinny line. And then there's two windows now and I want my windows to be pointy on the top. So I'm going to use my paint and I'm gonna make the windows very pointy on the top. There we go. All right, so from this triangle, I want to go straight down and fill in a square. Okay, so I'm going to connect these two, these two areas of black. Let me get them all connected in together. Okay, so now I'm going to do a rectangle right here underneath this triangle, and I'm going to fill it in. Now, it's going to have like corners on both sides, so I'm going to add a little line there and a little line there, almost like I'm giving it wings, and I'm going to bring it down slightly with a little bit of a curve. Oh, we're almost done. Oh my goodness, you're doing a good job. Okay, so there's a little bit of detail here, but we can do this. We got this. I'm going to make a little rectangle right here. I'm going to make the top of the window curvy, or excuse me, pointy. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another square right here I'm going to fill in that square and then bring it down just a little bit it's going to blend in with this other one okay so now we have the other side so we're going to do a curvy swoosh, but we're not going to connect it. We're going to connect the bottom of that rectangle, and we're not going to connect it with the triangle over here. I'm going to bring it out a little bit, this line, and then I'm going to go straight down. And then I'm going to go sideways here and connect it with that other triangle. Notice, so it's an indent, really. It almost looks like a leg. And then this area here, I'm just going to fill it in. All right, so now we have some other little skinny towers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a straight line. And it's going to come all the way down here. And I'm going to have... Oops, I almost was smudging the paint everywhere. I got it on my hand because I set it down. And look, I got little dots on my canvas. Be careful. Okay, so I got the little line coming down. 
and then I'm going to have a little dot come out here like it's a patio, like a balcony. Got a little balcony right there. And that's it. All right, so now I'm going to underneath this circle, I'm going to bring the line straight down. And I've got another skinny little line that's right here that goes straight down. I'm going to fill it in just a little bit to make it like so it's kind of a triangle. Yep, so far so good. Okay, so we got the basic outline of the house. We're going to do the windows and the door. Let's go ahead and do the door. Now, the door looks hard, but it's not. It's going to be a lot of work, but trust me, it's going to look cool in the end. Okay, so I want to do a sideways dash and another dash. I want two dashes. Now, underneath the dash, on the side, I'm going to come out just a little bit, but I want this dash to go into the door. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to come down just a little bit, not a lot. Okay, then it's the dash. It's going to come back out and swoop to the right. And then this one is going to swoop to the left. And then after they swoop, they're going to come straight down. Now this is the bottom of the door. Now we're going to do the top of the door. I'm going to do the fence of the door because you know how like they have a grate that comes out and like it, like uh, medieval times they would have like a fence that would come down. So I'm going to do four, I'm going to do four lines. One, two, three, four. Four lines that go straight down. And then I'm going to connect them. I'm going to do horizontal, two horizontal lines. There we go. So I kind of like made a hashtag, sort of. Added an extra couple lines. So then from here, I'm going to swoosh down and curve it around because it's the top of the door. And I'm going to do the other side from the top to the bottom. I'm going to curve it down. And that's our door. Now I'm going to take it from the top hashtag and swoop down. And I want to leave this area that almost looks like a tusk. I want to leave that down, like space. I want space to be there. So it looks like tusks of an animal going to be part of the door. Okay, so now we got some windows. Now these windows are squares with a circle underneath. See that circle? Both look identical. So it's a square on top and then on the bottom there's like this circle that's connected to the bottom of the square. So I'm going to fill this in a little bit, just, you know, have some good time with my brush. Fill that all in. I'm going to do the same on the other side. Fill all this space in. You're doing a good job. I'm going to fill this in between the two windows. And there you have it. The door. Okay, so we got a couple more windows and we're almost done. Now above the door, 
there are two windows. So I'm going to do a triangle. However, with this triangle, I am not filling it in. Try to make sure that they're balanced on both sides. Okay, so I did two triangles. Now I want four rectangles that haven't been painted. So I'm going to do a line straight down the middle and then one down each side, each side of the corner, the, bot, the bottom corners of the, of the triangles. I'm going to bring them down and then I'm going to connect them. Now I'm going to make sure my paint is tight. My brush is tiny and skinny and I'm going to cut those rectangles in half with this, the skinniest line possible. And another skinny line. There you have it. Oh my goodness. You're doing good. Woo! You're doing really good. Keep up the good work. Now, if you're having a really hard time with this, um, I do have the stencil on the website. So go look at it, print it, uh, use transfer paper, honestly, if you've never done this before, and then just transfer it onto the canvas and then paint it in. It's so much simpler. The way I'm doing it and what I'm showing you, this is the harder way to do it. So if you are stressing out and having a hard time with it, using the stencil might be way easier for you. Okay, we got three more windows and we're done. I got a rectangle right here. And then I've got another two rectangles with pointy ends over here. So remember how we make the box first and then we make the tops pointed. And then that's it. So all we got to do now is fill it in. Now you can take your large brush if you want. Um, I'm going to go ahead with my small brush and continue to fill it in because I feel that with my small brush, I have, it's easier for me to get all those little details to make sure I get the lines just right. Now I want to be very careful. I don't go back into any of the windows that I've painted. So be very careful with that, but just go ahead and coat everything with black or with whatever color. If you're making yours pink, that would be super cool too. And don't worry if your painting doesn't look exactly perfect like it does in the movies, okay? Because we're, we're learning to paint here, we're practicing, we're working on it. It takes time to develop the skill. So be patient with yourself. And after you fill it in and you have all of this space and it's really cool, at the very end of the painting when we're all done, we're gonna go back over all of our lines that we made on the outline of the castle and we're gonna touch them up. So. I mean, try to do your best to get them as good as you can. But if they're not super perfect, don't worry. We're going to go back at the end and we're going to touch it up and we're going to fix it. And it's going to look really cool. So I'm just pretty much filling in the rest of the castle. There aren't any more windows. It does take a while if you use a small brush like I'm using, but I don't know. It's not that much to fill in. It's really actually kind of quick. I feel like I have more control over the brush since I'm using a tiny one. But if it's taken too long for you, go ahead and fill yours in and use a bigger, bigger brush. And there's no rush to get this done in five minutes, okay? This painting should take like two hours, okay? It's not going to happen really quick. You've got to be patient with yourself. If you're not patient with yourself and you don't take the time and put in the extra effort and the extra time, your painting won't turn out that great. So be patient with yourself and just let it happen. 
and it's okay if it doesn't come out perfect. We can always do this and take this class again and paint it again. I've already painted this painting a bunch of times. That's why mine's looking cool because I've already practiced this one a lot. From here on, it's going to be a little bit easier. I won't need to talk a whole lot to explain everything. I mean, we pretty much did the hard part. This is pretty much the hard of the hard part. So you made it through. Um, so if you wanted to turn on some music, some Disney music or something, that would be super cool. Um, the only reason I don't have music on my video is because I have so many students that take my class and everybody likes something different. And I don't want to force you to have to listen to anything you don't want to listen to so it's just easier if I don't do music and then you put the music on so you can pick and choose what you're listening to you're gonna notice that as it dries you might see some brush strokes in there and that can be totally cool to see brush strokes um, now in the cart in the movies there really is no you don't there is no brush strokes you don't see it they really blend a lot um, but we're making a canvas painting, so if you see some brush strokes, totally cool. It, it makes it very homemade, artisan, very crafty. You know, it'll look really cool with some brush strokes. Just be careful you don't accidentally put your hand down on your painting and get black everywhere and then smear it. And be careful if you get paint on your clothes. Once it dries, it stains forever. Ooh, this looking really good. You're doing a good job. Wow. I'm going to take a moment, and because of the type of canvas I have, it's, it's on the frame. So I'm going to go over here and just paint my sides. I like it when the sides are painted. I think it just adds an extra little cool layer to the painting, makes it extra special. If you don't have sides and you're working on a flat surface, don't worry about it. You don't need to, you know, that's just, just because of the type of canvas I'm using. Once you're completely finished with your painting, I think a best choice would be to let it dry completely all the way before we go on to the next step. That way, if you have a boo-boo, it's okay, and the paint won't really mix with the other paint, and it'll just be a lot nicer. It's less, it's easier, it, it'll be, it's easier to not, to, to let it dry so that the boo-boos, if we have any, we can fix them right away, and it'll be way easier to fix boo-boos. So that's what I'm going to do with my painting now that I'm to here. I like what I got. I'm going to take my uh, paper towel and I'm going to pull. I'm not going to push. I'm going to pull the excess paint that I had on my brush off. And then I'm going to put it in my water and mix it around just a little bit. Bend the brush a little bit and check. Yep. And then what I can do is get, come back to my paper towel and try again and see if it'll make a black mark. Oh, it did. It made a little bit of a mark. So that means I need to wash my brush and do a little bit better job washing it. So I'm going to come back with my paper towel and test it again. I'm going to pull it, not push. I'm going to pull and I'm going to turn. And yeah, it's a little bit for the most part. I got pretty much all of it off now. Yep, there is no more coming off. So now I know my brush is clean and ready to go. So I'm going to put my paint to the side and I'm going to use my handy dandy hair dryer and I'm going to dry my painting as much as I can. I recommend that when you're done, painting and all the black not the, we're not on the blue yet so when you're red done with all the black go ahead and and let it dry
you'll know that your paint is all the way dry when it's no longer shiny. So now let's work on the sky. So I'm going to add some blue onto my palette. Since I am trying to be a nighttime look, I do want to use my primary blue or a dark blue. Don't use light blue, otherwise it'll look like daylight. Okay, so now I'm going to use my large brush, and to make it easier, I'm going to turn my canvas. I recommend that you do the same thing. So I'm going to use my blue. I'm just going to go here and paint in the sky. If I get some brush strokes in there, that's even cooler. Make sure that I paint the sides too. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing over here. Now, if you want to be more like in the movie, don't leave brush strokes. So basically the way you avoid not having brush strokes is just to go over it a million times with your brush and blend it all out as you go. Now I know that we have flags in here and stuff. I'm going to wait till the end to do that. Otherwise doing this part right here would be very annoying. We had to constantly keep dealing with their little flags. If you go over the black a little bit, that's actually kind of okay because it's black. So it's fine. We can, well, it'll be able to, it'll shine through your blue. Unless you have a really blackish type of a blue, then it's not going to. But look at what I'm doing. I'm being brave. I'm going over. It's okay. We can always touch that up. Try not to go over your windows. I accidentally went over one of mine. I'm not too happy that I did that. That's okay, we'll have to just paint it back into white. So, you kind of got to work a tad bit quick, so that way your brush strokes are even and they make sense, and you don't got any hard lines going on anywhere. Try not to go over a window, but if you do, that's okay. Now this method, what I'm showing you here, it pretty much only works when you're using black. Because by me painting over this building, if you're using pink, don't do that. I mean, if you got a light color, only do it if it's like a dark, if, well, I mean, if you're using a dark color for your castle, because otherwise what's going to happen is that it's really gonna, it's gonna dull the color a lot. You're gonna have to put a lot of extra layers to fix it, to get it a light again. I'm gonna go back over this with black, but we can still see the rough outline. And this guy's got some really good texture going on in there. Make sure you get both sides too. And that was another reason why we drew, we dried our painting really well. So that way that the, um, that the black doesn't go mixing in with our blue that we're putting here. Cause we want to have a very vibrant blue. So we need, we need the black to be as dry as it can possibly be. Another thing that we could have done was we could have painted the whole entire sky first and painted the blue and then gone back over it with the black because the black would have covered up the blue a lot. 
Um, but it's pretty much the same method as to what I just showed you earlier about how to draw the outline. Pretty much the same thing. The only difference is we wouldn't need to uh, go back over and touch up some of these lines. However, I think that it's better if we do touch up the lines because then we can really work on the lines and the outlining of the castle. So it would be good to touch it up against twice. So by us doing the castle first and then the sky, it's really, we're, we're kind of doing this a lot faster. It doesn't seem like it right now, but trust me in the end, you're going to love the results doing it in this process. Uh, but yeah, so I'm liking it. It's good. So now we need to let it dry fully before we can go on to the next uh, step, which will be, we're going to add white. We're going to do the star. We're going to add the flagpoles and stuff. So I'm going to take a moment here and dry my painting as much as possible. Take a moment to and wash your brush out. So that way it's not sitting at your table uh, with the paint on it drying because you don't want the paint to dry on the bristles themselves and that can happen after so long of the paint just being there. So take a moment and wash out your brush. We're not going to use this brush again for the rest of the painting. You're doing a good job. Keep up the good work and don't worry if you're stressing out you can always paint this again. So take out your hair dryer and dry your painting as much as you possibly can.
light. It's looking really good. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some white onto our palette and we're gonna work on the star, the shooting star, the Tinkerbell. We don't need a lot of white paint, just a little. Just take out just a tiny little bit. Now I'm gonna use my liner brush, dip it in my water, and then I'm gonna make it into a nice pretty point with the bristles. So it's going to be less is more on this one. We're going to make it really skinny and then we're going to build it in to be fat. So first I'm going to make my little dot and I, I want to make a line of the angle of the arc on where it is. If you need help, you can take an upside down plate, put your plate here and then trace an arc. So like, I mean, I have paint on this one, but I could put my paint here and then with a pencil, I can trace the arc. So I have a nice, pretty arc going on. Okay, so I'm going to start on one side and I'm going to work on the arc and make it the skinniest line that I can possibly make. Be careful that you're not putting weight down onto your canvas so you don't poke a hole. And don't do this if your your canvas is still wet. Now, if it's easier for you, turn your canvas. It's always good whenever you need to turn your canvas. Now, if it's not a perfect arc, don't worry about it. Don't stress out. We can always fix it. If you super, super hate it, you can paint it again with blue. But if you paint another layer on top of this layer, you might not have those brush strokes anymore, which could be cool if you don't want to have brush strokes in your painting. But just, you know, take your time with it. Enjoy the arc. Let it be what it is. So now that I have a skinny arc, a line, I'm going to go and add dots. Now I'm not only going at this point forward, I'm only adding dots. Now they're going to kind of come down in some places. I want a dot, an area of dots to come down here. So I'm going to do a little line to remind myself this is where they come. And this is how far they go down. They go down that far. Then I'm going to have another little area. I'm going to have two little dot patterns come down here. One there. And I'm going to do another one about here. And then I'm going to do another one here. And I'm going to do one more here. Now, do you see what I did? I have a basic idea as to where they, these dots are going to come down. This is where it is on in the movies. These are where they kind of fall down. So I'm going to make this a little bit thicker. And I'm going to do it by adding just little tiny dots. However, when I do my little tiny dots, where I've made my lines where they're dripping down, I'm going to kind of keep those to let them be there. And I'm only going to do dots on the bottom side of my arc. I'm not going to add any dots to the top side of the arc because I want that to be a crisp, clear line. So don't dot the top, just the bottom. Some areas are a little bit fatter than other areas with dots. If you need to reference the photo, go ahead. It's on my website, reference the photo. I'm referencing the movie photo a lot over here. I keep looking over at it to make sure that my angles are good and doing everything right. And really, honestly, there's no right or wrong way. 
There's just your way. So however you make these awesome cool dots, that's how they're going to be. And they're going to be cool because you made them. Remember not to dot on the top part of the arc. We only want to dot this bottom part of the arc. Want to make sure that they come to a nice pretty point over here, which is barely, barely. So now I'm going to take a moment and go back over what I got. Oops, I want this to come down a little. So I'm going to make it come down ever so slightly and make it a little bit fatter. Remember, don't swoosh. All we're doing is dotting. We want lip little tiny dots we still want to see some blue between those dots so don't over dot okay so now that I've got that I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna work on these spaces that I came down and I'm gonna make them kind of triangular so that they're bigger on the top and then they kind of dot down into into a nice pretty point so see how that looks kind of like a triangle almost with the outline of the basic idea of where the dots are and do the same thing here they come down but then they're still kind of chubby up here like an upside down triangle liking it it's coming along really nicely you're doing a good job okay so now for over here for the main star itself it's a bunch of little dots it's kind of round so we still want to see some kind of blue and that's it you're doing a good job less is more Okay, I'm going to let that be. I'm not totally super happy with it, but I'm going to take a break for a moment. And then I'm going to come back to it. So right now, we have all our windows. Now, for the most part, we can consider that we're done with this painting. But I'm going to make the painting a little extra special. And the way I'm going to do that is by all these windows, I'm going to paint them white. You could possibly paint them with yellow because I think they do. They start off white and then they turn yellow in the movie. But I'm going to take a moment here and I'm going to fill in every single one of my windows. And I'm going to take this time to try to make my corners extra sharp and my lines extra flat and make sure they're not wobbly. And this is really going to clean it up a lot and make it extra pretty. Also, what this does is this protects our painting because, yes, we're painting white on an already white canvas, but by doing this, our painting's going to last longer. So, for example, if you're hanging this up in an area where there's a lot of moisture and humidity in the air, then uh, you could get some mold and the paint being on the canvas is going to help protect the canvas so it's not going to want to change funky colors like purple and green. And then also, if you're in a place, like let's say you're putting it in your living room and you have a fireplace in your living room, or you have somebody in your house that smokes, if you paint this white, then it's going to keep it, it's going to keep the yellow for the, from not wanting to be on the canvas, because all that nicotine and smoke in the air is going to want to, over the years, it's going to want to make your canvas turn yellow. 
and brown. Uh, but that takes many years. It doesn't happen right away and it depends if there's a lot of smoke. So you don't need to do this part if you don't want to, but yeah, I think it's worth the extra few moments just to go ahead and make sure everything's good and square and also to make sure that they're the size that I want to be. So if I want to adjust any sizes, make it bigger or smaller, I can. It'll be way easier now. And be careful that you don't put your hand down on an area that has wet paint. I know it sounds silly, but boo-boos happen. So I'm going to take a moment here and just paint them. I really don't have much to say after this for this moment. So if you want to go ahead and listen to some Disney music and... I'm going to be over here hanging out and when we're ready to move on, I'll let you know. So go ahead and take your time. Oh, and also while you're doing this, if you need to turn your canvas, turn your canvas. There's no problem with that. Make it easy on yourself. And be careful that you're not resting your hand too hard down onto your canvas because you don't want to stretch out your canvas.
sorry about that. My uh, phone just kind of almost died here, and that's what I'm using to record on. Had to go plug it in for a second. Didn't want to lose you. All right, looking very good. Very, very good. You're doing a great job. Keep up the good work. Don't get stressed out. If you don't like your windows that you're painting and they're just not coming out good, it's okay. Because we can paint them again. Like I just made a boo-boo. I referenced the photo over here and I just realized that in the movie, these windows are not white. They're actually blue and I wasn't paying attention. It happens. I make mistakes too. So don't get hard on yourself if you're stressing out.
All right, so it looks like I've done just about all the windows. Double check in referencing the photo. I like what I see. Okay, so now is a good time to take a moment and go back on if you would like to touch up this uh, area after you have all your windows done. I'm going to take a quick moment. If you like how your comment is doing, don't touch it. Don't do anything to it. This is just if you feel like maybe you want to touch it up a little bit more and put some extra little dots in there. I can mine. I think it's pretty cute. Super cute. There we go. When you're really happy, let it be. Sometimes I feel like we can touch up too much and then we hate what we got. So be careful it don't happen to you. I'm pretty happy. It's, uh, yeah, it's kind of how I envisioned and what I thought it would look like. So I'm going to call it quits for now. Yeah. So now what we're going to do is we're going to work on the... We're going to work on the black and we're going to touch it up and we're going to add the flags and all the extra little details that makes this castle super wow. So I'm going to put my paint off to the side and use my handy dandy hair dryer to try to see if I can get this the driest I possibly can. I recommend that you do the same thing. Oop.
So we're almost done. I'm gonna go ahead and do the little details. So I'm gonna wash my brush really good and get all that white paint off. And I'm gonna use my liner brush and work on the little details like the flagpoles and where my paint covered the cas castle and there's blue, I wanna give that a fresh coat of the flag. So let's go ahead and work on the flagpoles. Now my, my brush is a nice pretty point. So wash your brush, wipe it out, get it to be a nice beautiful point. And with that point, we're gonna do one right here at the top of this, this, um, I don't know what they call it. What do they call it? Tower, I guess. I think there's like an actual name for it. Steeple? No. I'm gonna do a straight line up and then I'm gonna make the flag come out and it's gonna come out towards the left. So we want this to be really super skinny. If you need to practice skinny straight lines, go ahead and practice first. I'm going to do one right here at the top of this one. It's going to come straight up. And then this flag is also going to go to the right. All the flags will be going to the right. And what this will do is this will tell us that there's wind blowing and it's all blowing in the same direction. The next one is going to be right here. Look at how that detail, that little detail just does so much. Now this one is just a straight line up with no flag on it. All right. So now I'm gonna take my liner brush and I'm going to go back over some of the areas where I see that I painted, where I painted the blue. Now it's not showing that much on the camera, but I can see it. And this is also a good time if you want to make any of your lines a little bit straighter, like if they're kind of crooked or you're angled in a wrong way, this is a good time to go ahead and fix any of those boo-boos that you might have had. So let's say like you wanted to make one of your little towers a little bit more pointy. This is the perfect opportunity to go ahead and do that. If you need to fix any of your windows to get them a little bit square, use the black to do it. Now remember, less is more on this one in the sense that don't make your areas all super big. Like just do little lines and the little details of where they need to be and then build in. So outline first and then build in, but you know, we still want to keep things small because if you paint a whole big area black and then you're like, oh, I painted, it's too big, it's too fat, then you're going to have to go back over with the blue and that's going to be like a whole headache right there to have to go back and forth between the blue and the black and you're going to have to use a lot of blue to cover up the black and then you're going to want your blue to match throughout the painting. So you're going to have to need to do all the blue again to be able to get it to be the same right shade. And so it's all like cohesive with all the sides of the painting. So to avoid the big headache, just be very careful with the black and only put it like right here. Oh, I went too fast and I ended up going over some of the blue. But if you wipe it up really quick, really fast, you can avoid the problems, but you have to get it really fast within seconds. 
you wait longer than seconds to wipe up wet paint off of a dry canvas, then it's forget it. It's going to be a whole headache. I also recommend using the liner brush right now to, to like touch up anything to make your corners extra pointy. Using the liner brush will give you a lot more details. Be careful if your paint's wet about putting your hand down so you don't smear it. And I'm only going to go in areas, in touch up areas right here where I feel that the blue has come over to the black and I can really see it. And this is like detail work, honestly. This is like being extra, extra. Nobody needs to be this extra, extra unless you want to be this extra, extra. Now, if you need to reference the the end for the photo so that way you can ah okay yeah and you can remind yourself of little things and i'm going to make this tower a little bit fatter Thanks for painting with me. I had a lot of fun today. This was a really fun painting. Very challenging too. You did a good job keeping up. I mean, wow, I'm impressed. When you're done with your painting, if you'd like to show it to me, I'd love to see it. Uh, you could uh, send me an email or maybe on Facebook. I'm, I'm on Facebook a lot. Send me a, like a hashtag and link me to it. So that way it'll send me so I can see it. I want to see how cool you painted it. And if your painting doesn't look exactly like mine or the photo of Disney, don't worry about it. it. Art is a journey. We're constantly learning. I've been painting for many, many years, and I still feel that I'm still learning and getting better with art. It doesn't just happen magically overnight. It's something that we need to practice. And if your painting is super awesome, how cool. And if you have any questions, you know, you can always send me a picture and be like, what did I do wrong? How could I fix it? Or, you know, like show me so that way I can, oh, okay, here's what you want to do. And so I can help you through the process. And oh, this was so much fun. I find painting relaxing, even when it's kind of stressful and I'm trying to get all these lines just so and perfect. I mean, it's still relaxing in the sense that we don't have to worry about anything. We could just focus on our painting. I mean, there's so many people in, in all over the world that have to stress about what they're going to eat, where they're going to sleep for the night, like all these little things. And we were so blessed today to just think about painting. We don't have to think about anything but our painting. So that, that's really nice that we're so blessed like that. That's why I like painting. It's my happy time to just kind of hang out with my buddies. Yeah, doing this little detail work and really getting those lines to be straight, I noticed that my painting is really coming out really crisp and clear. I'm really liking it. It's like almost, it's kind of like the more I'm fussing with it, the more I'm like, yeah, it's working. Because also with this picture, with the Disney logo picture, is that like it, it, uh, it's a lot of sharp edges and sharp corners. So the next time that you need to like paint something and you're just not sure, just break it down 
into shapes of what kind of shapes do you see and then just paint the shapes so instead of looking at it like a whole as the image look at it break it down into what different shapes is it making and you can do that pretty much with anything that you paint I mean, even if you're like painting the uh, human, like if you're trying to do the face, just break it down into lines and curves and all different sorts of different kind of shapes. Now, the, like the human body and like the face, pretty difficult. There's a lot of shapes going on there. Um, but I would recommend painting other things first, like maybe like fruit, because fruit's a very simple shape and working up from there first. And then as you get better, better than working to humans and animals and whatnot there that have more complex shapes within them. You are going to notice that laying down this fresh coat of black, you're going to see that it's shinier, but that's just because it's wet. When it dries, it's going to blend in with the other paint. Now, the only time that it wouldn't and it would be kind of awkward is if you're using really cheap, bad quality paint. Then it's you might notice the difference between the, the stuff you did paint, one that you painted one time, and then the other areas where you painted a second time. You'll notice a difference. But if you're using good quality paint, once it dries, you won't see the difference. I have a kitty here that just came to join me in my art studio. He's a poor guy. He got neutered. And uh, he's having some issues because he's got a cone on his head. So that way he won't uh, dig it as stitches. And so to help him. And poor guy. He doesn't like the cone. And he's trying really hard over here to get it off. It's kind of silly. So if you hear the noise, the scratchy noises, that's what it is. He's trying to shake it off and get it off and he doesn't like the cone. But it's for his own good. If he pulls out his stitches, it's going to hurt. It's not going to be a good thing. Get all infected and ugh, you'll have to take him back to the vet. He's over here. He's like, Mommy, stop painting. Come hang out with me. He's got like a donut thing. Like it's a cone, but it's not a cone. It's like it goes around the collar and it's a, uh, it's like a donut. It's like a, like an inner tubey thing. All right, okay, so I'm liking it. I got my edges. I think they're nice, crisp, clear. You know what I need to do? You might need to do this on yours as well. Right here, when I came across the white part, it kind of need to add some more paint to really hide the white part of my little flagpole here. Give it a second coat. There we go. Now, I kind of made a boo-boo, and I made these two windows need to be blue, and they're technically not window. Well, I mean, they, I guess they kind of are. Um, they need fixed. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix the angle right here really quick. Okay, I'm going to let that dry, and then I'm going to paint over that blue. Um, now I'm looking here and I do see that something that I kind of waited to the end to do is I've got a little tiny line right here that's like a chimney. 
So I'm going to add that little chimney right there. And then I'm going to do another little one right here. It's going to be like a rampart. And these are little details. I mean, honestly, you don't need to go this far. I'm just doing a little extra. So with this, I want my roof to come protrude out ever so slightly. So I'm going to give it a little bit of a, it's going to come out here on both sides, a little point. And I want it, oop, this, I had it over here. I'm going to turn my painting really quick so I can try to see if I can get this line to get a little, to become a little straighter. Make sure it's extra pointy. All right, so I got my roofs going on pretty good. Where else? This to me ain't working. So I'm going to take a quick moment and fix it. And I'm going to, let's see, how to fix it. Gonna make it really square on the top of the roof and it's gonna come down as an angle. There we go. Let's see, are there any other little boo-boos? So far, so good, I'm liking it. Hmm, just checking, doing some little checks here and there. And, um, okay, I can see a couple little boo-boos. I'm going to make this guy a little bit more square. Okay, so now with these two top windows, I that we when we did them circle, I did it on purpose to make it simpler, but now we're going to adjust them. We're going to make them rectangular. Um, the circle was just so we can start to make it easy at the beginning. So now I'm going to just square these off. Okay, it's going to help me if I turn my canvas. I recommend you do the same thing. And these windows up here, we're going to make them square. Okay, so now with this one at the very top, I'm going to cut it in half. There we go. So I've got two windows. I'm going to have two windows up there. These are the little tiny details that are like annoying, but trust me, in the end, it'll look super cool. Notice that I had some blue there that I, when I went over on these areas. And that's pretty much it. That's that's pretty much the whole painting. Honestly, I could probably fuss over this for many, many hours to get it just right. 
Oh, you know what I forgot? Oh my goodness, it's a good thing I, I remember before we go. Okay. Um, so the two windows are supposed to be blue. So I'm going to wash all the black off of my paintbrush. I'm going to go back into some blue and I'm going to cover them up. Oh, ah, the paint is wet. It's wet. I need to take a hair dryer and dry it for a quick moment. brush clean off all of the black and then I'm going to go in with a little bit of blue and I'm going to do the windows Hmm, that black got in there. I'm probably going to have to cover it up with some white. That, that little strip of boo-boo that I had, that white area, yeah. I'm going to have to lighten that up. I'm going to boo-boos. It's okay. Happy accidents since happen. There we go. So I lightened it up. And do the same on the other one a little bit. There we go. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my handy dandy hair dryer and dry it all the way. <laughs> just gonna try to outline it and get a nice pretty shape I want it to be pointy on the top
I'm going to turn it to make it easier for myself. I want there to be a pretty line coming down the center. Make sure both sides are also good and straight. And then I'm going to want to cut across on the bottom. And make sure that gets all covered. And there we go. That's how to fix the window. This looks very nice. This was a lot of fun. Thank you so much for painting with me today. I really enjoy it when we hang out. It's a lot of fun. Please let me know what your painting looks like. Send me an image. I really want to see what it looks like. I'm excited. And if you liked this class, please uh, give me a review. I mean, even if not, please give me a review. Let me know what I could do better. Uh, let me know what you liked about my class. Um, Facebook's a good place. The website. Pretty much any of the social media platforms. I'm on all of them. So uh, thank you, and I will see you on the next one.